Looks like Tesla will be the first car in space. Hey you, it's me, Curtis P. It's time for some coffee. More information is coming out about the upcoming Falcon Heavy launch from SpaceX. Originally, the launch was to take place before the end of 2017, but it has now been pushed back to early 2018. Now, that might be a little bit of a disappointment, but Elon Musk has promised something big for the first ever launch. Announcing on Twitter this week that the payload of the first ever Falcon Heavy launch would be his very own Tesla Roadster, stating, Falcon Heavy to launch next month from Apollo 11 pad at the Cape. We'll have double thrust of next largest rocket. Guaranteed to be exciting one way or another. Payload will be my midnight cherry Tesla Roadster playing Space Oddity. Destination is Mars orbit. We'll be in space for a billion years or so if it doesn't blow up on the scent. Now that sure is one way to show off the true power of the brand new rocket to the world. Of course, leave it to Elon Musk to not only try to get his rocket into orbit, but of course also send a Tesla car all the way to Mars. When I first read about this, I thought it was a joke because you can't do this, right? But hey, leave it to Elon Musk to continue to prove that nothing's impossible for him and his team. So it's sure to get the world watching on January to see if SpaceX can truly send a Tesla car to Mars orbit. So with that, Elon Musk chose to send a Tesla Roadster to the Red Planet, but what would you send to Mars if you could? You can let me know in the comments section down below. Jumping into the quick news for the day, looks like a Bitcoin miner has found an ingenious way to get around the massive power demand for his mining rig. The Bitcoin mining rig has been built in the trunk of a Tesla car, allowing it to run off of the free electricity the car can get from the supercharger network, meaning every Bitcoin the car can mine is 100% profit. Miners in China are currently looking towards hydroelectric for their power needs, and those in the UK, they're turning to wind. So the utilization of the Tesla supercharger power network is a rather smart one, but it probably won't last too long. Bad news for the so-called Tesla car killer as Faraday Future continues on a downward spiral. Richard Kim, their VP of design, has resigned, and it appears he's not the only one not coming into work anymore. The company has been having problems keeping people at work and even showing up to work. On one occasion, it appears that only two people showed up in one department on a single day. Over the past year, five of the founding executives have left Faraday Future, and the company has ditched their plans to build a billion dollar factory in Nevada to manufacture their electric cars. Now, if self-driving cars aren't your thing, well, Emirate Airlines is also announcing a whole new line of luxury for the skies. The company has announced the addition of giant spacious enclosed suites on their new 777 airplanes. Each suite is 40 square feet in size with floor to ceiling walls and even sliding doors. There are even virtual windows so the cabins in the middle of the plane can even get a view of what's happening outside. Now, maybe if you're lucky and you have a small fortune to blow on your next flight, hey, this would be the best way to travel if you're willing to pay for it. And something many people have been buying into in the past year is smart luggage, basically luggage that includes a battery for charging your other smart devices. But now it appears that US Airlines and Alaskan Airlines have announced a ban on smart luggage, unless the battery can be removed when it goes through security. And they don't appear to be the only ones. Delta and United Airlines are expected to announce a similar ban in the coming days, but no news on any airlines outside of the US announcing a ban such as this. Next up, it looks like Apple is still working on ways to get iPads into the hands of more and more people around the world, as the company is considering releasing an even cheaper model of the iPad next year. The new 9.7 inch iPad is expected to start at a whopping $259. Apple's November earnings call points out that iPad sales are going up for the first time in a long time, as the tablet market has been in decline for the 10th straight quarter leading up to this earning call. Now, Apple's push to make the iPad more of a laptop replacement has been in high swing for some time now, but with a cheaper model being announced in the near future, it could entice more and more people to switch to an iPad as their main daily computer. And last for today, Amazon has been making some big advancements in their drone delivery technology but a brand new patent shed some light on what their plans are for when a drone goes bad. The brand new patent is for plans for a direct fragmentation for unmanned airborne vehicles. In layman's terms, it basically means when drones can self-destruct in the air in the event that they're going to crash. 
This way, smaller pieces will hit the ground and are less likely to cause harm. The patent itself even outlining an interesting new fragmentation chip that would be built into the drones. This chip would be in charge of deciding when to destroy the drone upon the proper conditions. The chip would take into account the drone's flight path, weather conditions, and nearby terrain to decide where and when to actually blow up the drone and how to deal with its package. Now the package itself would fall to the ground using its own parachute system that Amazon says would be built into the future shipping labels. Overall, it's a rather interesting system overall, but it's kind of crazy to think that in the future, the skies might not only be filled with Amazon drones, but a few of them might explode every once in a while. Well, if you enjoyed today's show, make sure you click on that subscribe button, and of course, join the notification squad so you can stay up to date on all of the latest videos I produce throughout the week. You can of course also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Discord. Links to all of that are in the description down below or on my website at curtisparody.ca. Well, until tomorrow, everybody, I'm Curtis Parody. Have an amazing day.